Uh, good evening, good evening. Jay Ryan here. Uh, this is the Cars and Comedy Show in the Late Night Playset. We have a very pretty girl over here. Her name is Nicole Ryan. She's with us every single Tuesday and Thursday night. So please, if you want to look at her more often, watch this show. Now would be a great time for you to like and subscribe if you get a chance. Um, it's a good night. It's a good night. There, uh, there's a lot going on in our lives, on this show, on other shows that will be coming up. There's so much going on. Uh, we are going to be talking about some of that stuff tonight. But what I'm really, really excited about is not only talking to the Instagram audience who is here, but we have a fantastic guest. Uh, and almost kind of a co-host this evening as well. Uh, you probably know her. She's been on social media quite a bit. She's been on this show quite a few times. If I had a sister in the world, this would be the closest thing. Catherine DeLorean will be joining us for the entire night. The entire night. Hello, Cat. <laughs> How are you? I'm on mute. That's where I am. That's how I am. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> well, but it's working, right? It's, it's working. Yeah. We're good. We got it. We're good. We're, we're good. I still can't see you, but we're good. I just have to watch myself. It's okay. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to figure that out. Uh, there is a lot to talk about. First of all, it is Tuesday, June 7th, 2022. Okay, well, I can hear that right now, so we're going to definitely have to mute her. I can hear... Caller, would you turn the radio down? Okay, I did it. <laughs> your mic is live in your room, right? Yeah, oh, I have my muted. phone. I can't see you, so I'm watching you on my phone. How is that possible? What is ca Canadian Mike always looking at, I wonder? Himself? <laughs> I himself? can only hear you if I'm watching myself. <laughs> You know what? There was an update to this software today that we did. I updated every single thing to whatever our switcher software is, you know, 0 0.80 or something. And I'm wondering maybe that had something to do with it. It's not usually a problem. It's okay. It's so I can hear weird. you. I just, if you show something, I'll have to do this. But I turned we, it down like a smart person. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You look great. You are in your home office, I think. And I love the painting behind you. We'll get into uh, in depth in a little bit. <laughs> We're going to tell that story to everybody? That's my favorite story. 
Oh, yeah, if you want to. It's up to you. Well, this is whatever you want. This is whatever you want. I'm so excited that you're here. It's a great time to be here. DeLorean is in the news for other reasons. We're going to talk about uh, some wonderful uh, things that we support with the DeLorean Legacy Project. And, uh, and if you have any uh, stories, questions, comments about either Catherine or John Z. DeLorean or the DeLorean Legacy, uh, now would be the time to throw them in the comments. Uh, either, gosh, Instagram. I don't know how I'm going to be able to get to it. I don't know how we're going to. I don't know how we're going to figure this out. But we are going to figure <laughs> it out. <laughs> so, in the meantime, allow me to ask some some help from our from our home viewers here. Usually, we have the Instagram audience on this iPad here, and usually you can go uh, Instagram live from an iPad. And usually we have this here, and it's great, and then I can see everything because it's big, and my old eyes can read the big letters. Uh, it seems it seems that uh, maybe Instagram has taken away the ability to go live from an iPad because all we have at the bottom are the option to do story and or post. And I've tried this on other iPads that we have here, and I have completely deleted the software off this thing and re-put it on. I've changed all the networks. I've done everything you can do. It seems to be an Instagram issue. So I was curious if anybody at home had an iPad and could see if they could go into Instagram somehow uh, on their iPad and see if they can do it. Maybe it's just, maybe it's us and our account. I have no idea. Uh, but it's weird because it's how we used to run this whole thing. And if we can't do it, I got to figure something else out. <laughs> I guess we're moving to Twitch <laughs> or something else. Because this was working out pretty darn well and we were liking it. Uh, so no wonder they would change it. Of course. Thanks. Um, hmm. <laughs> How you doing? Let's start there. How's it going with you? Slowest walk into the studio maybe ever today, but you were upright and you did do it. Small blastings. Well, how is it? How are you doing? Same. Like, my legs just are really bad and my shoes feel heavier, but I have to figure out every day. Like, it is what it is. It's true. Your shoes are heavier. I told you that. Those Keds would, or those Vans are going to be a little heavier than the, the Hunziker ones you had. You know, those golf shoes. Is that a problem? And I don't mean it's not a bad thing if it is. No. I just need to change myself. All good. I'm going to lose my shit on this microphone. I'm I sorry. We need to tell. reconfigure some stuff in the studio. I have had no time. There are a lot of exciting things uh, coming up. And I don't even know what I can tell you about. I don't think much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really sorry about that. I don't think much, but I am going to break either this microphone or this desk today, and you're going to see it. <laughs> Jay's going to lose his shit right here on the air because just too many things uh, at once. There are just too many things. I, I can't see the – I know you're there, Instagram audience. I can't read what the, everything says because it's too goddamn small for me. So maybe we'll try to make it bigger. That didn't help at all. Okay. Here we go. Let's do this. Uh, Hatch Motors. Oh, it's you. Oh, man. It's still the same. All right. Sorry, guys. Yep. There's a lot I missed. Hi, Auto Kennel. <laughs> We're going to need to figure out a better way. Uh, let's see. Irene Hoffman says present. Irene Hoffman, the picture you sent me the other day is on my phone, and I can't show it to everybody because it's over here. Don't get me started. Do not get me started. Uh, it's hard enough to do the things that we do in here every day when people uh, keep their electronics and their uh, apps and everything the same. But the moment they change shit or whatever, or, or you can't do this anymore, or we're doing this a different way, here we are at a stall, got to relearn it at all. Changes everything. I don't know what they know. Like, it's bananas. I don't think anybody's doing anything as complicated as we are with all this, so there's probably that. It probably doesn't affect anyone as much as us, but... You know, I, I, I try to make the most out of what everybody makes and does with these apps and stuff. So I, I guess we're always pushing it. Anyway, uh, what's new? A lot! Um, but most of it we're going to have to put a pin in. <laughs> we're going to talk about a really exciting announcement today on this show, a little bit later once Kat's in here, um, talking about the DeLorean legacy and, um, and ways that... Uh, quite frankly, in ways that you can be involved in the future, at least uh, with telling your story and stuff like that. So we're going to talk about that exciting announcement in just a little bit. In the meantime. Oh, yeah, here, look, this is exciting, too. In the meantime, look at these chairs. This is one chair. It's a picture of one chair from so the website. Pretty. They are in these boxes right there. 
That's right. <laughs> right. We are waiting to pull them out uh, as we are making some other changes here in the set. Um, in the studio here, I should say. And uh, in the meantime, we will be changing the chairs that are in here. They currently look like this. They will eventually look like this. And um, quite frankly, they're open for sponsorship. <laughs> they're from Design Within Reach from Herman Miller. They were custom made, and um, we got a pretty good deal on them, and they're still about $1,000 each. So if you would like to sponsor one or both chairs, uh, either $1,000 or $2,000 um, to the... In fact, this is the fun thing, because we actually bought them, but then somebody else can get the tax write-off on their donation, and then somehow we eat. I don't know how it all works. Somehow we eat it, but whatever, whatever. Um, so anyway, if you would like to sponsor a chair and have your name on one of the guest chairs on this Cars and Comedy and the Late Night Playset show that will soon be going to other places as well, uh, send a message <laughs> or a check. <laughs> Whatever's better for you. They are pretty. They are very comfortable, and we are very excited. And I will remind everyone that these were custom designed uh, in the shade of blue that the original late night chairs were uh, from the original David Letterman show because uh, uh, Kathleen Anchors was somebody I used to call, and the production designer who won the Emmys for this stuff. Uh, I used to call her, and I used to interview her as a kid, and I would really just harass her about, how did you make this, and where did this come from, and all this crazy stuff, and she was always so nice to me. So these chairs are in what we now know as Kathleen Anchors Blue. Kathleen Anchors Blue. It doesn't mean anything to anybody else out there, but if you're a Letterman fan and or me, um, it's a nice little fitting tribute to a, a really cool, nice lady who, uh, who passed away a number of years ago <laughs> after winning Emmys for her work. Uh, specifically this desk and chairs, this set, not this room, but when it was in the theater for the David Letterman show, uh, uh, won an Emmy for the production design, which is pretty amazing. So, chairs. If you would like to be a part of that in some small way, <laughs> buy us some chairs. Uh, okay, now this is going to be fun, but I need to clear some room. I'm rather excited about this. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, well, we're going to do this together. We're going to figure out how this goes. It's viewer, it's viewer mail time, but the box is really heavy, so give me a second. Oh. Okay. Well, in the meantime, actually, here's some other stuff. Uh, Expo. No, fucking. Endorse Expo. Endorse Expo is a really fun thing we did the other day. Uh, ahead of the NAM show, we met a lot of great vendors and uh, had a great time. Thanks to Greg Grumberg. It was really great over at uh, Sound Factory in Hollywood. Great time. Basically, all of the, not all of, but some of the higher end NAM vendors Never know what NAM is. It's the big, uh, it's the big show for for audio, uh, whatever music and audio engineering and sound reproduction and stuff like that. Musical instruments, everything, everything to do with that. Um, anyway, the NAM show is a big deal, and it was happening last weekend. But if you were like in the know and don't want to go to the whole show, you sort of get invited to these little previews where you can. Anyway, I got invited. Really good time. Thank you for everything. Had a great one. Now, big box. Not that big. It's really heavy. Oh, good grief. Now, Sean Cridlin sent this, so that tells me what I think is in this box. Does everybody know Sean Cridlin? <laughs> Just look at everybody on Instagram. Sean Cridlin uh, wrote the Hurley book on Hurley Haywood. He wrote the book series on Brumos, which I have a feeling is related to this box here today. He was on the show recently talking all about this. The, the book hadn't come out yet. and was just about to. He had a preview copy with him. But it, it looked about as heavy as this was, so. Oh, no, nuts. We got a double. It's a, we got a Russian doll type of situation going on here. All righty, here we go. <laughs> Woo! Let's do it again. <laughs> oh, I was right. Look at that. How cool. Wow, I couldn't open that up better. That's amazing. Oh, this is exciting. All right. Can everyone see this on Instagram? You can still see. You got that right? I told him we would uh, open it on the show, do a proper unboxing here. This, now that we know what it is, this is an incredibly generous gift. Does everybody know about the Brumos book series and just how nice and all-encompassing it is? Wow, here we go. Okay. All right. Let's see how we can do this. Oh, my God. The, small, the smaller the package gets, yet it doesn't change weight, the heavier it seems. 
the boxes get smaller and smaller and it's not getting any lighter, you know? I bet. Oh, man, this is not going to be easy. Here we go. Oh, boy. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> Those are heavy and thick. I tried to tell you. Oh, boy. Holy crap. Oh, my gosh. Oh, wow. I think this is the... Oh, man. He really... He went all out. This is amazing, Sean. I think this is the full four-book collection. Oh, there was two versions of it. You could get, you know, the, all the books, and then there was this one... I'm sorry, everybody. I should have done some of this ahead of time. I thought, oh, it would be so nice to unbox it properly on the show, which I never do. I always do it ahead of time and then put it back in the box. Holy crap. This is incredible. I mean, I don't want anyone to think that I'm complaining about the weight. I am, I am simply taken by the quality. This weight means quality. This weight means it's ink on the page and very, very high quality. Here we go. <laughs> Wow, collector's edition. Holy smokes. This is amazing. Wow. And it's got all the signatures. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Oh, I got the wrong person. I'm sorry, Kat. I got this. Through. I'm doing the whole wrong thing. Good grief. It gets worse and worse. All right. Shit. Is that better? There we go. That's what I was trying to do. All right. This is amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm guessing, because I think here, because this was pre-opened, I'm guessing he signed one of these, which means it's probably for us and not for... Oh, boy. Here we go. To Jay and Nicole, thank you for your support. Congratulations on your new endeavor. Oh, that's amazing. All right. So this is... That's so cool. He's talking about cars and comedy and probably some other things. Very, very cool. I'm, so, I'm amazed and blown away. So I can't. Cool. Thank you. 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 The whole thing's awesome. amazing. Um, if he didn't sign it, I thought, oh, maybe this is to uh, like uh, for the foundation, like to uh, raffle off or whatever. But this seems to be for our collection. So thank you, Sean Cridlin. Uh, if anybody wants to come take a look at the Brumos collection, stop on by and peruse them in the green room. That's where they'll live. People can look at this while they wait to go on the show. That's amazing. Oh, wait, hang on, there's another box. They all go in this one. Okay. Yep. I'm telling you, you're going to want to get ahead on that Twitch, because this is the kind of stuff <laughs> you're going to see on that once we get live on the Twitch. Oh, son of a... <laughs> Whew. Oh, my goodness. Whew. All right. Uh, whoa. Who did it? Let's see. What did I miss here? EDU France is here. Uh, hey, Tim Pappas is here. Uh, I hope you'll join us at some point. Uh, oh, by the way, speaking of which, speaking of good guests, uh, Patrick Long will be here later this month, um, as well as other people. Greg Grumberg's going to be here soon. Uh, Misha Mansour and Chris has a camera together will be in here later this month. Uh, great guests coming up. Great guests coming up. Really excited about it. We, we, say, we say really excited about it a lot, but we really are this time i think we usually are but i really am this time uh wake the neighbors wake the kids and phone the neighbors woohoo rusty here what's up rusty so good to see you uh still playing phone tag uh with that information whoa uh that you're looking for from worldwide pants um but we are we are looking at that uh that's how we, uh, whatever i can't tell everybody else about it but uh, but there you go don't think i'm ignoring you we're just uh, playing some phone tag Just catching my breath here. <laughs> How are you when I get all, uh, you know, do you feel me like I feel you when you get that way? I do feel you and I I just re remind myself that it's not mine. It's not your fault. Yeah. Over and over and over. That's like, great. Kid. Uh, we, that you used to not be able to do that. Yes, it's progress. <laughs> That's fantastic. And pat yourself on the back a little bit. That's good. Good for you. Thanks. Uh, holy crap. I really made a mess here. <laughs> uh, Twitch is awesome. All right. Yeah, we've got some friends. We've got some friends on Twitch. <laughs> uh, 
All right, let's see. Now, here is the moment where we were going to do how's the weather, where you riffle, I'll point, or I'll riffle, you point. But I have a feeling that this is going to get old quick. If we do the, oh, riffle and point, like, what the heck, the same number again? So here's what I came up with an idea. So if you were here with us last week, we tried a new segment called What's the Weather Out There? How's the Weather Out There? How's the Weather? How's the Weather Where You Are? What do you want to call it? Let's, it's a new segment. We, it doesn't have a name yet. But we, uh, we called a number randomly out of the, uh, out of the uh, phone book here, and um, it ended up being uh, Barbara Gaines from the, the Late Show. No, that's, that's not the Late Show anymore. But the Letterman YouTube channel. She has a little show with Dave that uh, does new uh, YouTube videos every day or so. And... Um, Keep me on my toes. And uh, anyway, so there is a, we have the direct line to that show, and I can leave a voicemail. And I was, you know, we were trying to think, oh, this would be funny. It would be a great way to integrate some comedy back and forth, whatever. I think I have a better idea. Well, I have a different idea. We'll see if it's better or not. Why don't we use this opportunity to try to interview Dave through the Internet? Like, we'll ask a question on this show, and maybe he'll answer it on his show and then I'll ask another one, and then, you know what I mean? Maybe. I Maybe like that's that. the way to do it. I like that idea. All right. Now, I'm borrowing your phone since mine is the Instagram audience tonight. And uh, let's see here. I think I got all this. I'm going to make sure nobody's watching me because I, I almost did it on the camera the other day, which wouldn't be good. Oh. Hi, Barbara Gaines. It's Jay Ryan and Nicole Ryan calling from the late night playset over here on Cars and Comedy. We were thinking um, if it's going to be really difficult to get Dave on our show, maybe we would just ask him the questions we were going to ask him on your show. So I was wondering if you could ask Dave what the story is with his old microphone. I know there's a good story. I'm wondering how much of it he's willing to tell. Uh... I'd be curious to hear it. Is he, uh, why? Why did he, why did he have this old microphone and whatever happened to it? Um, what's Dave's side of that story? Uh, we love you guys. Keep up the great work. The show is wonderful. Love you. Talk to you soon. I just told Barbara Gaines I loved her. <laughs> <laughs> now, nobody here knows who Barbara Gaines is. Barbara Gaines was a PA on the morning David Letterman at the very, very beginning, and she worked her way up to executive producer. She worked the entire run of The Late Show. She worked as like a, I don't know, a receptionist, almost nothing in the beginning, something like that, a PA or a runner or something, an executive producer, the highest person on the totem pole at the end. And now she hosts a YouTube show with Dave. <laughs> <laughs> it's good stuff. Oh, wow. All right, so we did that. And that's been How's the Weather Out There, <laughs> which, of course, it wasn't. <laughs> uh, I think that's it, right? We're long, we're long, that's for sure But I think we're good Did I get it all out of the way? Did anyone figure out the, uh, the, the iPad situation? Does anyone have an iPad or, or their computer And they try to go live on their iPad or computer on Instagram? And then what happens? Topless Targo, PA is a production assistant A uh, low man on the totem pole In fact, I think she if I, if, the sto if I remember the story correct I think she was hired to be like a teleprompter operator Right? You know, the, the, the words that come on the screen. So I don't have one. You can probably tell. But usually when people have their thoughts together and they're reading a script. Uh, and then uh, very shortly after she got hired, they decided to use cue cards. <laughs> but they kept, they kept her on, of course, because they liked her and she was doing a good job. That's awesome. I don't know if I knew that. And then executive producer at the end. And still, and still in the worldwide pants world pretty awesome and contrary to popular belief did not go work for the view some people think she did it's somebody else all right uh commercials and then moving on all right hang on barf baby says it's easier to tip on switch on twitch Ooh. barf baby i'm broke tipping babes hilarious <laughs> <laughs> maybe come paycheck time you tip mrs ryan here a little bit <laughs> <laughs> Throw her a little extra coin. <laughs> Let's see. I tried going live on my computer, and it did not work. Yeah, wherever it used to be, it's not there anymore. I tried it on mine, too. And then the iPads, wherever it used to be, it's not there anymore. It only says post and uh, the other one, whatever it was. All right. 
Well, that means that we need another iPhone. God damn it. Isn't that, isn't that the last thing we need in this freaking place is another oh, yeah. iPhone? Really? And a giant magnifying screen for it. <laughs> I'll, have an, I'll have an iPad in front of it with the camera on the phone, and I'll just interact with the iPad. <laughs> That's larger. ridiculous. Uh, hey, any plans to have Cam and Steve from Road Scholars? Uh, well, Cam uh, Ingram has been here a number of times. Huge fan of uh, Cam's. And, 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 and he's a great friend in real life, too. Uh, so, yes. Um, th- th- generally, it's sort of like when they're in L.A., they stop by. Last time Cam was here, I think it was him and uh, Serio. Um, Steve Serio? What is his... Uh, de- uh, his uh, Come on, help me here. Bond, the real Bond group. Steve Sarah, the real Bond group. I believe they were both in here. And previously, he's been in here with Ray Schaefer as well. And he's been in here with, uh, boy, he's been here actually a number of times because he came with Charles Stanley once too. That's the one I remember always. Yeah. So, yes, uh, Cam's been here a number of times and he will be here again. Uh, but please, throughout the, keep throwing out the suggestions because I <laughs> need them. We forget. Uh Oh, wait, Cam and Steve. From, maybe Steve is, maybe it's the same Steve he was talking about. Yes. Uh, as soon as they're back in L.A., they will always come. Can you cast it? I love it. Long-time viewer, first-time caller. Did the man from last episode escape the inside of the Kia he was trapped in? Yeah, that's hilarious. Wait, you're the same guy. Hey, you. That's so funny. <laughs> it was a Kia uh, Sorento, if I'm not mistaken. And we were trying to tag it as much as possible to try to get him a, a deal with with Kia, either a sponsorship or whatever. Um, before I do these commercials and before we do uh, Catherine DeLorean in here, I just want to let you know that this being a DeLorean themed episode is, is, I don't think it's a coincidence. The world has been, in my life anyway, and from the people I've been talking to, it seems to be happening to other people as well. We are on some kind of like cycle replay uh, where we've we've completed the end of the cycle and we are now back to seeing things we've already seen again and being offered things we were already offered again. Several things from my past lives pavilion, the previous life we had before this Cars and Comedy sitting at the late night dining room show we're dealing with you now. I was involved in other things like the Back to the Future DeLorean in, and, and over here with the DeLorean world with Catherine and everything. It seems to be... This isn't the only thing coming out of the woodwork. Seems to be people and places from my past are coming out to get me to participate in things that I was once a part of a long time ago. It's kind of a weird homecoming. It's a weird homecoming. That's a lot. So the fact that uh, Catherine's here tonight is really, really thrilling for me. I'm going to shut up and we're going to do these quick commercials and then get her quote unquote in here. Um, St. Clair Insurance. Let's do that first. They say, all which separates men and boys is the coverage for their toys. What types of toys are we talking about today, Nicole? Here's my question. Can you insure lamps? Is the lamp of value? I mean, you can insure anything you want to protect, right? I think it is. I th- the what kind of lamps are you talking about? The one in uh, the Hawaii room. That Tiffany... Uh, it's... Hmm. It's in my head. It's you pointed like at the teal. wrong. Do you mean in this room right here? Yeah, tealy with a yellow. Oh, okay. What do you want to know about it? Can you insure it? Why would you want to? I bought that at IKEA. Because I, I mean, want Target. To say the same thing over again. Oh. <laughs> Let's figure out a better way so we don't have to throw a hot dog down a hallway that doesn't make sense. Oh, it's not a hot dog. That's a whole different thing. Sorry. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, uh, anything that has value, anything that has value. If that lamp has emotional, uh, what's it called? Significant. Sentimental value to you, uh, then you want to give it an agreed value policy, perhaps. You say, oh, this thing is worth $1,000 because that's how much it's worth to me, or ten, or 100000 whatever it is. And then, yes, you go get yourself some insurance. Meanwhile, meanwhile, back on point here to the actual, it's not a discussion, it's an ad. You want to have a discussion? No, 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 let's, let's do it. No, I, I'll figure something. To You're being say. clever. I like it. I like that you did something different. Try that. I know you think I'm, I, I, I really do. I really do. Thanks. I know you're worried about it. Your old life, you're worried about everything imploding around you. Um, licensed in most states, St. Clair Insurance shops top providers so you get the best coverage for your toys. Simply go to www.coverageforyourtoys.com. Coverageforyourtoys.com. Coverageforyourtoys.com. And tell Jeff St. Clair that we said hello. Obviously, Haggerty, we talk about it a lot on the show because of collecting cards and stuff. But 
He shops all the top providers so you get the best coverage. So if it's not Haggerty, you'll know. If it is Haggerty, you'll know. If you just want to move your existing Haggerty policy over to somebody who is now going to give you hands-on, well, not hands-on again, it's, it was that hot dog again, but you know, you, you get a, a, a personal uh, person that you can actually call when something happens. You don't have to just deal with the app and send a message to nobody and whatever. You can be like, Jeff Sinclair, I was at the grocery store and something happened and I need a new door. You're going to be taken care of. There you go, coverageforyourtoys.com. <laughs> For all of your lamp insurance needs. <laughs> And now here we go. We're going to talk about Series 1 films, but instead of talking about it, I'm going to show you. Uh, we had a pretty cool thing happen up at Breakfast Club the other day. There's always something special shows up, but the other day it was pretty, pretty special. 959 in Pearl White. So Taylor took some video, and this is the type of thing that you could hire Series 1 films to make for you. Roll it out. It's a, it's a neat car, and his footage is always amazing. Uh, he's really a good shooter, and he's got great gear. Now, I like that he's just a little bit different than other people, which then therefore makes his work different, and different's good, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, so check out Series 1 Films, or come up to GBBC some Friday and talk to Taylor. I think without further ado, I've done enough talking, and I've done enough announcements, and I've opened enough packages, and made enough messes. Um, she's, she's hydrating just in time so that she can do all the talking. Uh, this is going to be very exciting for me personally because this person is like my sister, but we are also, you'll see, we're kind of trying something new here. So if anybody, I'm going to remind you, if anybody has any questions about John DeLorean, any stories, uh, you know, that maybe you met him or you wrote him a letter or you talked to him on the phone one time, uh, or if anyone has anything they want to know about Kat or her life, please write it here somewhere here. They're on the Instagram or the YouTube, and we want to get these questions to Kat today so that she can answer them for you. And without further ado, here is Catherine DeLorean. Can she hear me? Hi. <laughs> Daughter of John Z. DeLorean, my sister from another mister. What's happening, you? Uh, a whole lot. Like, a whole lot has happened in the past week. <laughs> my whole life kind of um, took off really in a crazy way in the past week because of all these wonderful people in the DeLorean community. Well, how's um, it going? It's going really well. So, so let me tell you this crazy, nutty journey that I've had. <laughs> um, I started, uh, a, I would say after the movie came out. So framing John DeLorean was supposed to be this, um, finally give the community something that they had that they could say, hey, look, he was framed. And here's something that tells him in a better light. And uh, it didn't quite work out that way. <laughs> so <laughs> um, it's better than a lot of the other ones, but it didn't quite work out that way. So I felt like the community still didn't have something positive they could turn to. And there's so much negative press and there's just so many stories that don't really tout all the amazing accomplishments my father had. And when I would go to the shows, the one thing I would hear over and over is the frustration people had that people didn't know the positive story. So one day I was talking to my husband about how Every single DeLorean owner I talk to has this amazing story about how the car inspired their life. And almost all of them start at some crazy young age, um, usually five, six, seven, eight. Totally. Um, and then their whole life is somehow inspired or defined by this car. And I don't know that you all tell each other the same stories you tell me. And I definitely know <laughs> that you don't. <laughs> You don't tell them to, you know, you don't get to tell them to the whole world. So I thought to to give back to the community that's given so much to me, I could create something authoritative that allowed them to have a collection of all the positive impact that the car and my father have had in this world. And it started last year. It, it started after the, the movie, but it started to really take off last year when I started to write... Um, 
a book and, and an outline for a book, because that was how I thought to do it, uh, of, I called it the untold DeLorean story, which I guess is now something else, but that was my original working title. <laughs> um, <laughs> and and the whole the whole idea behind it was was to gather stories from the owners and how the car inspired them, but also the family members and the people that worked for him and just put it all in one place. So you could say, here, look, this is his daughter. She says he's a good guy. You can't argue with me anymore. <laughs> yeah, and just have um, a place, a place for all, yeah. an archive for all of that information. Yeah, and, and just the stories are, I mean... <laughs> They make me cry all the time. So they're really touching and wonderful. And, and I really wanted to share it with everyone. So about in February of this year, I started to really hit hard on trying to reconnect with the community. And um, I had contacted Kevin Abato and I said, who do I need to reach out to? Where do I need to go? I reached out to Tamir on DMC Talk and said, can I rejoin the community? And can I start to like connect with people for this project and everybody was on board. And so we're trying to build how I'm going to reach out to everybody and get the word out to everybody. And fast forward a few months and, or I guess just one month, cause it was just March. Well, before you even get there, that sounds like a great idea and something that has been, uh, people have needed and wanted for a long, long time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, that's why I did it, because I figured it was the one thing I could give that I could give that was unique that I could give back. And um, I, I ended up through this whole journey. I ended up meeting Angel. Um, I'm going to murder their last names, but I love these two boys. <laughs> Angel the, Guerra and Alan Portillo. <laughs> these are the designers? Portillo? Yes, yes. So Angel does the exterior design and Alan does all of the rendering and the interior design. And he's been running the whole website. So putting everything together. What's um, the website? It's DeLoreanLegacy.com. But I, ha I was going to get to that. So. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Go <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. So, so I'm talking to Angel and we're just casually talking. And I go to register DeLoreanLegacy.com and it's not available and i start freaking out <laughs> i start talking to everybody i know and they said oh you know all of the websites have been started to be bought up and i said i just want this one can i get just this one <laughs> and i'm literally talking to somebody about it and angel messages me and says by the way i got this website and i called it deloreanlegacy.com I was thinking of having a place on the website where people could write letters to your dad and tell him how much he meant to them. And I kid you not, I said in type to him, are you effing kidding me? <laughs> because what is this? It's unbelievable. I, I go to register a domain and bam, here's a website. Ta -da! Just the idea that, oh, the, when you finally decide to do it, oh, it wasn't available. Oh, that's a bummer. And then how long before, you know, when you realize, oh, that's going to be a headache to him saying, hey, by the way. I was actually complaining to somebody about it in that moment. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. I was literally throwing a fit. Like, I just want my website, please. Oh, my And he's gosh. like, by the way, I have this website. <laughs> It was amazing. It was amazing. So all of a sudden I have this website and then I start to do all of these things. And I, I'm having, I've been getting all these messages and people are hurting and some people were angry with me because <laughs> I'm not doing the things that are causing people to be hurting. Um, so I said, all right, I'm going to clarify a few things because apparently something's going on that's causing chaos. So let's just go ahead and say these three things. Well, that landed me in some kind of media storm that I had no idea was going on. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine Dorian no says. Idea. I guess. So all of a sudden, everybody's coming to me. 
And so here I am trying to find people and trying to set up a website. And, and I literally had a 12 month plan and it's been less than 12 days. And I have all and it's, of this it's coming happening. from every direction. Yes. And it's, it's crazy. Cause I was, I was talking to my, um, I call her my mom now it's BJ. She dated my dad his whole life. Yeah. Um, I was talking to her and I said, all of this is taking off and we can start this charity that I was talking about. And, um, and, and she said, well, cause eventually we're going to do this whole thing. Let me be clear. The legacy project is only for the fans. <laughs> um, and that's only for the fans, but there's a whole charity that I had planned in honor of my dad as well. And she goes on to describe, um, exactly like she said oh your father wanted to do that with the farm because i said i wanted to lift people out of poverty and she goes on to describe exactly what i have laid out hang on the farm exactly. being your old home your childhood home yeah in new jersey sorry yes bedminster yes he wanted to have 10 families come and live there until they could get on their feet and be um independent so that they had their basic needs met and they didn't have to work a bunch of jobs they could actually have a life they could live instead of live to work and that's kind of the basic premise of what we have right just help get you on your feet um it's he, not his just intent was to change premise. people's lives though right yeah yes yes yeah um she described it word for word exactly what i was trying to do and i lost it i lost it i go back to my home and i open up my linkedin and i have one friend request and I hope maybe this person's watching and they'll recognize, but one friend request from a nonprofit venture capitalist working on social <laughs> equity projects. <laughs> I'm like, what is happening? You're golden kid. All you gotta do is think about I, it. It shows up. <laughs> it's just, it's raining miracles. That's all. So, wow. um, it's just been this wonderful journey of, I mean, there's some kind of craziness going on, but I don't know. I don't know what that is. I stepped in it by accident. <laughs> well, I mean, do you think so? Or is this just the culmination of a life lived? You know what I mean? Like you're finally coming into your time and your own. I honestly think John did this. <laughs> I, I love that. He, tell me, tell me I what you mean. He, uh, well, I, I was telling Angel and Alan, I said, I think my dad sent you because everything was happening so perfectly and then everything else is happening so perfectly. Um, but then there was the time where I swore I saw a orb and I told my husband, <laughs> I think picture, my dad yeah. was here. Yeah, and he, <laughs> and my husband's like, well, that's creepy. He better not be watching us all the time. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> oh, thank you for that being your first reaction. That's. But, um, but it's been, while I've been working on this and building this, I felt him as a presence with me, as somebody who's helping drive me and keep me focused on what's important, which is, you know, everybody's asking me, so I'm going to tell you right now, don't ask me what I think about the car. I don't think anything about the car. I don't care about the car. I care about what I came here to do, which was give back to all of you. And everybody's been hurting and they've all missed me. So here you go. I'm here to reconnect with you and to give you a voice and to hear all the wonderful things that you have to say about my dad and be a voice for you again, because I really did miss the community. I have found friends that are lifelong and family to me through all of this. Um, we should tell this story, actually. That's a really good segue to this story. We it? should, but just one thing you said when you say uh, you don't want to talk about the car, you mean uh, the, the new car. When you talk about the, 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 cl the classic DeLorean automobile, you're fine with that, yeah. correct? Yes, yeah, yeah. But everybody wants to know what I want to say about, I don't care about that. Let's, yeah, th that's I don't, really... I, just, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> you and I have talked off camera, you know, a lot about this, and... it. It, it, it seems to me, and I hope you don't mind me saying, but it seems to me that that couldn't be further from your yeah. interests. Like you have no interest in rocking the boat. You simply want to create something good over here. If someone else is then being irked by the goodness that you're creating over here, that's kind of on them. And that's my opinion. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know yeah. that anyone's panties are in a bunch, but it seems via the internet that some are. And um, I think that's misdirected. 
it's it is it, it is what it is you know what it's okay because it let me find everybody and that's good Amen. it's a good a good thing it. came out of it right so so good <laughs> here we are so positive i love it i love it so yeah that picture behind you is not just a painting of a delorean car it is it's like the most famous painting of the <laughs> it's, the, it's the painting of the delorean automobile <laughs> yes and you pointed out that it's crooked and i can never look at it again so yeah <laughs> it is it is true it's asymmetrical and crooked <laughs> It's terrible. But that's kind of what I, I like it. about it. Yeah, it's but it's hard to look at. Okay, so back to the DeLorean people becoming family. I had this hanging in my house in Texas, and Jay and I met up at a DeLorean car show, and he had to drive cross country. I think we were in Kentucky, right? I, I just told this recently. I regla- I think it was Lexington, Kentucky, but it was definitely yeah. the same trip where I was driving across country to be with Nicole, having just met her, you know, a month prior or whatever. So it's this, it was the same trip. Thanks. Yeah. That's amazing. And it's also um, the same trip with that. that sh- <laughs> this is why we told it the other no. day with my, my, my Freddy Krueger. No. No. <laughs> but, but that, that is not, gonna, not part of this story. No. no. We're not going to tell that story. No. no. See, but for me, they're connected because I think it was even the same day. And I was already a little bit woozy from that thing that happened in the shower that I think that's why my head wasn't clear for this story that you think is so funny. (laughs) It's a, no, it's not funny. It was the greatest compliment ever. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so I get a, so Jay had to drive cross country and he, and I, he got, I had him stay at my house in Texas overnight. So he had a place to stay. You weren't going to be there. So I I was there alone. You were, you and and the family were going somewhere else. Yes. Yeah. So, so he stayed at our house and <laughs> he gets there and he sees the painting <laughs> and he, he sends me a text message and he says, oh my God, did you know I have one of these cars? <laughs> you know how when you're world, you have these worlds and everything's compartmentalized and you kind of keep people separate and then one day they kind of collide and then you remember that your friend cat is also the same DeLorean as the car that you built with your friend. And, like it all just kind of... And like I said, I don't think it was in my right mind because that exposed nerve that I had just bit in the shower and knocked myself out. But all of the above, I saw this and I was like, I can't believe you have it. Do you know that blah, blah, blah? And I go, I can't believe what's happening right now. I felt so stupid. I mean, so stupid, you guys. So stupid. Oh, it was the best compliment ever. It was the best compliment in the whole world. You met me through a DeLorean. You just left a DeLorean car show for crying out loud. I mean, yeah, but it it's it was That's never what our thing has been based on and we don't yeah. previous I mean, we don't really shy of lately and all the reasons we have lately. We have never even really talked about the car much cuz like who cares? No. Yeah, it's just another car. Um, but that's what's amazing about it is that it's created so many opportunities in people's lives and then in my life to to build just some of my favorite people are from the delorean community and overwhelmingly there is a higher ratio of good humans to normal or bad humans in the delorean community overall which is amazing oh i love that you've done the math on that (laughs) yeah (laughs) (laughs) that's cool (laughs) better vibes with the stainless steel crew (laughs) yeah well i think I think it actually has to do with what it takes to take care of the car and and what it means to the people who buy it. It's, it's just such a unique owner. (laughs) Yeah. That's what I found. It really is. It is. Cause it's interesting. Cause you got, you know, there's car people and there Mm -hmm. are movie people and DeLorean people are often both. And that is a very weird place. What's that? The the Zen diagram where they overlap. It's like a weird It's a weird place to be in that one little pedal in the middle. But th- they, I think because of that, not only are they more passionate, but they're a little more, um, I don't know. The DeLorean people wear it on their sleeves where there's other car people seem to be all kind of, it's all f- phony and bo- it's all about the, the dollar value <laughs> and whatever. And DeLorean people are just like, let me, t- let me tell you about me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and in a good way. Yeah. And well, and a bunch of them aren't even car or movie people. They're just geeks. Oh, interesting. <laughs> they're just they're just normal everyday. You mean like sci-fi people and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just 
normal nerds like me. <laughs> nerds. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you are, uh, you are kind have... of a nerd. I mean, shy of the fact that you're part of this legacy, you are kind of a nerd. I mean, you're into, you're into all the stuff. Yeah, I'm very much a nerd. I am. I'm a hacker. That's my job. <laughs> but you're into the collectibles, and you know the the comic yep. book stuff. You know all of it. Yeah, she spawn. That's a comic book character, and yeah, I'm very, very much a geek. A hundred percent. Were you always your whole life? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Very much. My dad bought me a computer when I was like six or seven. So I've always been. I used to use something called a bulletin board service, which is before even the internet. Like what you guys think is the internet. <laughs> like Prodigy and stuff? Before Prodigy. So Whoa. it was when you had to actually dial into, it would be the precursors to forums today, but it was like you had to tell net into somebody's system and they had something yes. listed on their system. Yeah. You were almost dialing into someone else's mainframe, right? You kind of, yeah, exactly. Because like you were their, access. Their, it was huh. just their computer, but it was acting that way. And it right. was funny because Chris, Christina used to always take my phone away as, as like I'd get grounded or something. And I would hook my computer up to the phone line and talk to my friends. <laughs> yeah. it doesn't matter. I, I could just talk to them that way. Cause nobody knew you could talk to people that way. And then when AOL, when Prodigy came out, we were very excited. But when AOL came out, it blew everybody's mind. That was, was the like, one. Oh for my me. god! Look at yeah! Look at AOL! Look, it's so crazy. <laughs> I bought and a computer when AOL came out. It was literally just like what we now have as a browser window with like four buttons on top that let you click web, mail, <laughs> and it was mind blowing. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't believe it. It could take you everywhere. It was crazy. Yeah, this is amazing, and you got four thousand free hours. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! That's great. Welcome. You got mail. <laughs> yeah. So we, we, it around. wasn't AOL that we met. It wasn't that far back, was it? When we were no. Okay. Well, AIM might still have been in existence, but it was at the end of its life. But what were we on? Was but it MySpace? When when, when we were finding probably, each other, probably. whatever that. No, year. we found each. You found me on DMC Talk. Remember the message? You sent me one message and i responded like a crazy person <laughs> I, I read, this is my favorite this is my favorite story i love this part yes <laughs> I, you were like oh we have these things in common and so i responded like reading one mess one sentence at a time and i ended up sending you like a thousand crazy messages i'm like this guy is never gonna respond back each to one was I'm like oh that's gonna... crazy and the next one was like dude and then the next one was like you gotta be kidding me <laughs> Because everything was exactly the same. It was so cool. It was. And then it was like we never stopped talk. It was like we never started talking and like we never stopped talking. Um, that was a that was, was a no, really weird one. Yeah. You're a weird friend like that because like you Yeah. You big banged into my life. There was there was yeah, no lead up. Good... No, there was no was lead up. Like, it was just hey, boom. Yeah. yeah, you're in it. You're in my life. <laughs> Instant best friends. Done. Yeah. It was a. Uh, it was cool. Um, but yeah, here we are. And we've come so far. And uh, all well, these years later. I want to say that you just, you yourself, you as Kat, seem so, I, I hate to just say happy, but you seem so put together. You seem like so connected, so aligned. I just want you to know that like we as two people who love you very much are really proud and happy to see you this way. Yeah. It was a rough road. <laughs> <laughs> That February, <laughs> that almost killed me. But, you know, here we are. <laughs> we made it. We got through February. Um, you helped. Thank you. But um, I, thank you. It was it was a rough road. And um, I know you were there for a lot of it. But this it feels like I'm where I'm supposed to be, leading the positive vibes towards the car. And so. Yeah. I, I really feel like you are where you're supposed to be. I feel like... I feel like this is where, I mean, you could have done this a long, long time ago. I feel like in a weird way, maybe you weren't ready and, and now you are. No. Well, because I didn't want to deal with it. <laughs> you know, I didn't want to, um, 
how I, it's hard to be in the spotlight and it's it's taxing and i wasn't really in a place where i was whole enough to be able to set the boundaries i need to with this kind of relationship with people mm -hmm. i give too much of myself and um i don't reserve for myself and that was taxing to myself and to my family so i had to make sure i was in a place where when i get drained it could be not just somebody upsetting me sometimes it's just i don't have enough left and yeah. i have to take a break because my family comes first that's important to me you got to refill your cup sometimes mm -hmm. yeah we say the uh, the oxygen mask thing all the time you know you got to put your oxygen yes. mask on before even your child next to you and it just doesn't mm -hmm. make sense when you're reading it in the pamphlet but if you actually think about it like what good are you to anybody if you are not if running you, can't you well if you can't be yeah. you to the to the extent that you want to and need to in your life you're ruining everything for everybody you got to take time for you and it's a weird thing because yeah. it seems it seems uh counterintuitive but it's true well, i tell people i tell people all the time who are caring for somebody who suffers from a mental illness or who has to care for somebody don't let yourself get to the place where you find yourself resenting the situation you're in the person you're caring for doesn't want that you know, you need to take care of you so that you can be there for them and they'll understand because they need you to be there again next time. And a lot of times we forget that. I feel like it's way too early to end, but I feel like those are that's like the kind of shit you want to end on. That's such a good message. Um, and we all forget every day. There's too, we're so busy. We're so stressed, you know, getting pulled in every direction. Uh, people, we, uh, mm -hmm. everyone. It's so easy to forget all that. Yeah. I, I, I love have, I love this balanced aligned version of you. I think you're freaking awesome. Yay! I have <laughs> three really I have three really cool tenants of the legacy. You want to end on that? Oh no, let's just go ahead and tell us what they are. Okay, so so a lot of people are asking how can I help because we have this wonderful collection of talents, and anybody who's gonna want to help, I have three tenants that we must all follow as we go out and and proclaim the legacy um the legacy represents inspiration hope and dreams and as keepers of the legacy we agreed to abide by the following tenets to allow the legacy to live on in grace and good vibes the first is we are the ea in team the part of the word that works together to create meaning as we recognize we all have the same goal in mind we will treat every interaction with patience and respect we agree to assume positive intent before judging anyone else's words and actions and behave in a manner that holds our integrity above all else and checks our egos at the door. Oof. And the <laughs> this second is, This is one, good stuff to live by anyway, but certainly if you're gonna be in that room. Yeah. Um, second, we agree that the goal is to fight darkness with light and spread positive messages about the legacy, gracefully brushing off and ignoring any attempts to engage in drama. I love that. We agree to represent the legacy in a fashion that reflects positively on all aspects and participants in the story. We agree not to engage in negative talk, even against our perceived enemies. Mm. We can speak the truth, but no more. If our enemies are truly acting with malice, they do not need our assistance in pointing it out. Our time is better spent building the legacy. If our message is truth, all we need to be is bigger, louder, and walk a higher path. And that's it. Yeah, we're, we're in. <laughs> we, we've taken the oath. We're on board. <laughs> I would like, you know, because I wanted to put it out there because a lot of people, they're frustrated and they are saying their frustrations and I welcome them too. But I also ask that you consider that saying things that are not you can say things that are contrary, try not to say things that are negative, because when we speak negative things, then a very wise person told me this. When two people are fighting, all anybody on the outside sees is two people fighting. Nobody will hear your side of the story if you're fighting. I agree, so. but I also know who told you that. <laughs> <laughs> And he was pretty smart. Uh, I love you so much. Um, all right. So 
You've talked a little bit about the DeLorean legacy. You've talked a lot about the DeLorean legacy. Do you oh, want I to about that. <laughs> do you want to uh, drop a little bomb here and talk about yet one more way that other people can in the future soon uh, get involved and uh, ways that they might be able to interact with you? Should we talk about that? Yes, yes, we should. Um, okay, so we have the DeLoreanLegacy.com website. All of this happened wicked fast. So <laughs> please be patient as we build it out. Alan needs to get sleep. So Alan Portillo is working on all of that himself. And so he needs to sleep and he needs some, um, you know, time to do his own life. <laughs> But that will be a place where you can submit the Dear John letters and you can read my blog posts. So I'm going to try and put more intimate and detailed stories than I can put on Instagram. And I don't have to invent a mushroom picture to tie back to my dad. <laughs> right. Because um, I do run out of childhood photos eventually. <laughs> uh, but another <laughs> wonderful thing that has happened is the DeLorean Legacy podcast with Cat DeLorean. <laughs> 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 yes, absolutely. DeLorean Legacy Podcast with Catherine DeLorean. Uh, I will be doing this with Catherine. I think Jason's going to be involved too, if I'm not mistaken. But this will I be a very so. interesting way for Catherine to not only get her own thoughts out there on a regular basis, but you, for you, think of the show Frasier, for you to be able to interact with Catherine in a public manner, in a public forum, uh, in ways that, uh, like we were saying here, send your questions, send your stories, send your letters, your, your memories of John Z, and or maybe meeting Catherine when she was a kid, whatever. Uh, stories of the car, whatever it meant to you, all of the important stuff that she's trying to put into this Hall of Fame of John Z. DeLorean, you all get to be part of it by submitting your stuff. And then Catherine will, one of these segments on this show will probably be a, a, a place where you are answering um, this mail. Is mm -hmm. that correct? <laughs> yeah, we can do fan mail. I really want to be able to hear people's stories. Um, my husband actually wanted me to do this because he sees what you all do to me when I hear and read your stories. And he said, they need to see this. They need That's to right. see what they do to you and how much they move you when you read these stories. So he's right. He, he felt, yeah, he I, is. I, Jason's said it's gonna right. turn he's brilliant. Into, <laughs> I said, it's just going to turn into the cat cries show, but that's okay. <laughs> I think the first few will be like that, but I mean, I've seen you with these people. These people move you. Um, yeah. And I mean, that was then before. I can't even imagine what you're like now that you're so open and so aligned and everything. I mean, like this is going to be really awesome stuff. I can't wait to watch it, let alone be part of it. Yeah, I'm very excited. I, I'm really excited to reconnect with everybody too. I, I love the superpower. I've said it before. I love the superpower my father left me with. If I have the power to bring people joy by gifting them a moment of my time, I am terribly selfish to not use it to bring people happiness. I mean, really? Yeah, but I also think in the end, it's going to end up bringing you, it's going to be, you know, one of those self, you know, perpetual motion machine of, of good vibes. Like it's going to end up helping you as well, I think. And through this process of healing that you're clearly going through and very healthily, <laughs> I might add. <laughs> uh, yes, actually, I, it is not completely altruistic. I get a lot out of this. <laughs> I definitely so get you filled know, with just as much joy. Yeah. <laughs> there's no such thing as true, true optimism, altruism. Altruism, yeah. Like it's all, you're, you're feeling good, so it's ultimately goes both ways no matter what yeah so and that's what it's about yeah good i love it i love it i love it all right now let me go to the instagram audience here and see if there's oh sorry everybody it's so tight on me oh that's not what you want all right let's see if i missed anything here i'll go to this the longer ones because those will probably be uh i have just one question how much did the original delorean company have to do with its usage in Back to the Future, was there a collaboration effort with the production company? I can answer this one, but uh, they probably want to hear from you. <laughs> I actually don't have a whole lot of the history that you all do. Uh, so uh, I... The, the answer to this one would be that uh, um, none. <laughs> none. Because the, the company had was already, it's a timing issue. It, you know, Back to the Future was in pre-production in 84. And, and and the company was, you know, already done. So, But the famous story that I do know is that John Z. DeLorean 
wrote a letter to Bob Gale, Robert Zemeckis, and the executives at Universal Studios saying how much he liked the uh, usage of the DeLorean in that movie. I, I, I do remember that. So I, I, I can say that I think he liked it. I think that's yeah, public record. Did. That's public I, record. I, can I have the poster? I actually have an original movie poster when Back to the Future 2 came out that he signed for me. Oh, that's so cool. I did. I asked I asked my dad to autograph my poster. That's hilarious. <laughs> and then Doc Brown couldn't drive a fucking Mustang, says Mr. Zero knew, of course. I remember that story. Yeah. And let's see here. I think there's... Uh, see? I'm so proud of you and your dad is shining down... Oh, look at that. Yeah. That's awesome. Poster. Uh, oh, this... oh, no. Did I just leave? <laughs> you're, still, you're still here. I got cut off. <laughs> well, she can, she can rejoin if she wants to. All right. In the meantime, I'm so proud of you and your dad is shining down with pride of you coming into this now that you're ready. And I'm so happy to see it. That's from Bird Woman S. Bird Woman's. Here she comes. She's back. She's back. Can you hear me? Oh, you're muted again. I can see you fine, but we can't hear you. Nope. 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 <laughs> you look great. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we go. So Steve Stinskui says, great to see you, Kat, and even better to see you happy. <laughs> and great to see you miming again. <laughs> You can hear us, but you can't hear her, right? I'm not crazy no. here. Well, maybe I'll leave the room and come back. Does that make sense? Here, I'll leave the room and come back. I don't know if I can do that. We'll see what happens. All right, now we're back, and she's here. Hello? Can you hear me now? <laughs> can you oh, we're hear here. me? Yeah! yeah. <laughs> nice! All right, well, I don't know how we did that, but uh, someone over here, Bird Woman... Bird Woman says, I'm so proud of you and your dad is shining down with pride of you coming into this now with when you're ready, and I'm so happy to see it. That's from Bird Woman. I love you, Anne, so Oh, much. okay, you know who that is. And then somebody yeah. over here on, uh, in, on YouTube says, great to see you, Kat, and even better to see you happy, from Steve Senkowski. Hmm. Do you know, do you Thank know Steve? Thank you, Steve. Oh, I love the heart. You're giving everybody the heart. <laughs> um, okay, I have just one question. How? Oh, that's the same guy we did his already. We answer that one question. Looking forward to the Legacy Podcast. Yeah, I am too. This is really going to be fun, and I think it's going to be great for you and for uh, the, the 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 DeLorean people. Do they still do the yeah. new car show every year? That that was the DeLorean car show. Oh, uh, I don't know that they do it every year, but they still do it. It wasn't every year before; it was every other year. Every other um, yeah. They still do it. Zach went to the one in 2021, so I guess the next one would be 2023. And I've already been invited to go. So it depends on COVID. Right. Because of my daughter. Um, right. Sarah. But hopefully we'll be in a place where we have enough vaccines and masks and stuff, like fancy things to put on my face that it'll do, be okay. Do we, know where, do we know where 2023 is? Where it's going to be held? Mm -hmm. Maybe we do, but I don't. Oh, okay. Okay. Got that. Um, hmm. Man, we had some fun a couple of those car shows. <laughs> oh man, it's so much fun. <laughs> I don't know. Those were the drinking days, man. I don't I don't ever want to go back to those because holy crow. And also I was in particularly drunk at those DeLorean events because everybody was buying us drinks. Like Yeah. Like crazy. Oh, yeah. Like like you were like, sitting with me. <laughs> but both of us, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, of course, with you, of course, they're yeah. your royalty. But the time machine stuff was going on at the same time, so it was like oh, I yeah. was not a small deal either. And it was kind of like <laughs> nobody knew what to make of either one of us. They're like, "Why are they so close?" And let's <laughs> let's go hang out with them. <laughs> well, you should now you should at least fill everybody in who stuck around on what happened with the painting store. So one of these car shows we went to, the Kentucky one, Jay, <laughs> Jay and I had way too much to drink. <laughs> and he had this Freddy Krueger prop and he decided to put it on before running around the parking lot closing folding chairs for some reason. Well, it was just one folding chair, but you, when you're right, you're right. I mean, we were farting around the parking lot for, for a while <laughs> doing stupid shit because we were you, really drunk. 
And you are like who's gonna people's... who's gonna get mad at Catherine DeLorean at the DeLorean convention, you know what I mean? <laughs> so we were just doing stupid stuff. But at one point I did pick up a folding chair and I was gonna put it in the trunk of the car for whatever reason we needed to fold it doesn't matter, I was gonna move it inside. <laughs> and I had the glove on and I folded it up and I speared oh, myself nope. oh. right there in that scar there. <laughs> Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then so when he went to my house, he took a shower and he touched his exposed nerve and almost passed out and died. Well, you guys shower. at the bar wrapped up this wound, right? Like, it's not like I went to the hospital. You dressed it at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> you mom of all moms, like, I'll take care of it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I put lipstick on you and took a picture that day, too. That was, we were doing some ridiculous stuff that night. It's not even. Yeah. So we don't drink anymore. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so then that you, you and the family went off somewhere else to continue the vacation, and I was going across country the other way to stay with, to meet, to whatever, to start this beautiful life together. <laughs> And, 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 and so I stopped in, in, you were living in Texas at the time and I stayed at this house and the whole thing. And I, my memory of being confused about the, in my mind, the poster thing happened after I passed out in your shower, it could but have. maybe it didn't, maybe I'm wrong know. about that. Maybe I was just, I, I, I thought it was when you first saw the painting, but I, you know, yeah, my you're memory probably is not right. the best. I think I rewrote it because I was so confused and it made more sense for me. I was like, oh, you're not so stupid if, if this happened. <laughs> you know what? Actually, it depends where it was hanging at the time. Because it was it in the office. Hung in... <clears throat> yeah, so you might have only seen it after you hurt your hand. Yeah, it was, it was definitely in the office off the living, you know, your old uh, office there. Yeah, so you might not have seen it till after you showered. So that would have been Hilarious. not when you first went in, but yeah. <laughs> hilarious it's still the best we, compliment i've ever gotten we have uh one hell of a history together don't we <laughs> yeah and we met on dmc talk after you sent me one message and i sent you a thousand <laughs> i i do love it but it, it, somehow immediately we switched from like we didn't continue to talk there we switched immediately to like text or im or something and then like multiple times a day every day for months yeah. That's what I remember. And like, I would was, go do DeLorean gigs and you would call me and I would talk to you for like from the set where I'm just kind of sitting around waiting and stuff. I'd be like, yeah. well, they're doing this now. <laughs> and we, it was like, we knew each other for our whole lives. It was not, we didn't, like you said, it was like a big bang. It wasn't like we got to know each other or anything. No, it it's like one of those just, kids you grew up with and you haven't seen in 10 yeah. years, but then when you get back together, it's like tuning forks, you just boom, right back to it. It was like, we just picked exactly. up right back to it. And we never, and we just didn't even question it. We were just like, yeah, we've, been, we've known each other forever. We were drunk. It's fine. We were drunk back then. <laughs> Not uh, when that was happening. At least I wasn't messing. No, no, you're right. I was just regular computer. during the day. But I mean, I just think How of all the time I worked. How much were you at, doing, Jesus? No, I just think about all the whole time I was working at you know at studios at Paramount. Everybody hits Chris and whatever else, and I just remember just chatting with her all day long with whatever the heck, <laughs> just whatever was going on. Like, it's not like we would just constantly chatted, but the window was open so that we could fire back whenever we were free all day long. Like, yeah. Like when you're a kid and you've got the note, you're like, oh, pass the note back and forth between. It was like that. So it was fun. fun. Um, I, I love you so much. I'm so proud of the person you've become. I really, really am. And I know your dad would be too. Yeah, uh, you helped me get here, man. And you know that better than anybody. Well, that's probably mutual, kid. <laughs> I think we've helped out. We've helped each other through a lot of shit throughout the years. Oh, man. I can't. Th I mean, for. how many relationships have you helped me through? Holy. Well, I guess just the one, but that was brutal, wasn't it? <laughs> Remember those days? Holy crap. The Connecticut how year. Many oh, so I, I've, I've known Nicole forever. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Irene Hoffman says, life has a way of balancing the lopsided, doesn't it? Yes, it does, mm -hmm. Irene. And Stainless DMC says, conversion, not conversation. Just noticed autocorrect got me. LOL, I'm batting a thousand here. No worries, Stainless DMC. <laughs> uh, I'm so happy I didn't miss all of this. As I mentioned on Facebook, I got my time zone. Ah, I see. I see. That's what it's about. All right. Oh. That's good. That's good. Yeah, I really borked, like, announcing everything, too. So that's on me. <laughs> <laughs> I have 
I haven't figured out all the social media stuff. Somebody's like, aren't you going to post this in DeLorean Fanatics? I'm like, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Oh, yeah. See, this is, yeah. I mean, I don't do any of that stuff either. We have no marketing department whatsoever. This show yeah, gets this done, and then I have to go take care of my wife and make fucking dinner and get the show uploaded and stuff. Like, there. where's the marketing? Who the heck could possibly go to all the Facebook groups and shoot it out? No, it, I just needed the one. Just the one that had the people I cared about. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I love you. I love you. I love you. I'm so proud of you. I'm so excited for all of this stuff. You look amazing. You are handling everything that's being thrown at you so stinking well. You've got it. You're golden. I hope that from here on out, you're able to just enjoy the ride. And I am yeah. really excited about doing the Legacy, DeLorean Legacy podcast with you. Very excited. Hey. So Me too. Big <laughs> scoop. Big scoop on that. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> Yeah. Um, is there anything else we want to mention? Anything we want to plug or talk about? Or is there anything we said we'd say and I forgot? I actually would love to plug Jordan's Brewery. So I have Alternative Medicine Brewery in Vernon, New York. Oh, look at that. Okay. And so Jordan is like one of my oldest best friends. And he is the person I called and said, my dad died. Please come to his funeral. So if you go to his brewery, I plan on eventually making like tokens you can get that i leave there and you could say cat sent me and pick up a little scavenger hunt thing um oh, but that. he's a really he's a really amazing human being and very close to me and so um he just opened up a brewery and he knew my dad well he can tell you cool stories about him too so um go check him out alternative medicine brewing in vernon new york i love that you know that's uh well vernon you know, mount vernon is close but but it's I think it's not far from where I grew up, right? It's where you grew Mount up to? Vernon. Yeah, it's Mount Vernon, New York. Sorry, Mount Vernon. Oh, it is. So yeah, it's yeah. Right. So yeah. this is this is our neck of the woods where we grew up. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. All right. Well, then when are we gonna get our asses over there to go to go visit Jordan? I thought you were coming soon. I thought you were coming to. Oh, you bring up a very interesting point. So maybe that's the whole thing. We work it in. We'll do it all together. Oh, you're going to be on the podcast. Oh, my gosh. We can do the podcast live together. Oh, this is all coming together. Holy cow. Holy we cow. We can do it live from the brewery. Holy cow. <laughs> Holy cow. It's becoming very real. He has a real. stage and all kinds of stuff, too. Oh, it's becoming very real. I love it. Uh, yeah. And what about you? How do people stay in contact with you? So you can find me on my Facebook and my Instagram for now. Um, both are, well, Facebook is Catherine DeLorean and um, Instagram is Cat DeLorean. So you can find me there. I answer every single DM that gets sent to me. So if I don't respond, it'll take a little bit because I have so many and you're all very important. So I don't just send a one-liner. I try and have conversations with you. So um, be patient. I'll get to you. I promise. Yeah, you get backed up sometimes because real life, but then you do end up clearing that backlog. Mm -hmm. Every yeah. time. It'll take me a little bit, but I'll always get to you. That's so awesome. You're the best. You're the best. I'm so oh, proud I of you. I'm, I'm going to stop this. saying that. <laughs> it's not my I want to say this it. one thing. Yeah. There's a lot of people who sent me messages over the years in Instagram over the, there was a long time where I didn't know how to use direct messages and people are messaging me now and I see years old messages pop up if you sent me a message and i didn't reply you probably ended up in that request section and you're gone now so just send me another one i didn't ignore you i just don't know how to use social media <laughs> yeah you try to get to i mean some slip through there's no way to avoid yeah that i mean some that happens but you try to get to every single one no there's just a lot that i missed before i knew how to figure it out and so a lot of people are showing up that have a lot and it makes it breaks my heart so i want to let them know if i didn't respond to you from a message a long time ago please send me another one i want to respond you're the best that's so great mm -hmm. uh and the delorean legacy is the website no delorean legacy yes, Delore just delorean, delorean legacy. legacy .com, yes delorean legacy .com, yes <sighs> i love it and soon there will be a delorean legacy podcast and yes. uh, and that's what's going on all right fantastic here we go Thank and, you so much. Uh, I love that you are embracing the good vibes lifestyle. I mean, like you, you, yes. you took it on and you have just, you're emanating it. It's go from the inside out. I have two breakfast club meetings myself that I have with two different groups of people to help because they, they were, they were hurting. And so I said, we're all going to get together and just have fun one day a week. I doubt that this DeLorean car show will be on the West Coast, but I sure hope it is. So that would then draw you and the family out here so we could do all of this in person. That would be really fun. Super do you want neat. me to go back to L.A.? Well, only because we're here. Uh, I we're mean, here. 
I actually got invited to the Magic Castle by an mm -hmm. old friend of mine. I don't know if I ever told you about Dave's house, but Dave contacted me, and um, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Dave's house? I've been to Dave's house. Yeah, it's house. a long, <laughs> it's a long story. But um, but he he, he he said he's a magician at the Magic Castle, and he invited me to go. And I said that's that's my one last haunt that I've ha I've been everywhere in Hollywood because you know a lister family, and yeah. I've never been to the Magic Castle. You're kidding? Ever. Well, it's a lot never. different than it used to be, but it's still fun. I mean, I've been yeah. a lot of times. Still fun. A lot of times, and uh, it actually it just got bought like a month ago by somebody. But I bet they're gonna, you know, well, they'll keep it the same. Uh, I look forward to that. So we'll go to the, we'll all go to the Magic Castle and we'll we'll do a podcast yeah. about that. Um, all right. So that's what's going on. Catherine Delorean, follow her everywhere. Follow Delorean Legacy and stay tuned with uh, the new stuff going on there. Yes, there is all sorts of other things happening with this show. I can't tell you what's happening today. There are other announcements in the DeLorean world of things that are happening. I can't tell you what they are today. Uh, but stay tuned, and these things will be revealed when they can be. In the meantime, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much for watching. Thank you, Instagram, for being here. I'm sorry that this was so, I mean, it was not as good as it usually is. <laughs> We're working on it. <laughs> the guest was great. My technology stuff, not so much. Uh, but thank you if anybody bought badges. I don't know if that's even possible from here. I can't tell. Um, I don't remember what we're doing tomorrow, but Thursday, we are back here, and I believe Greg Grumberg is the guest. He is certainly supposed to be. Um, we will have this confirmed on Thursday. He may be on a game show as well, so if he has to do the game show, he won't be here. If he doesn't have to do the game show, he'll be here. And we can talk about his new podcast that I was just on with Chris Jacobs the other day called Zero to Sixty with Chris Jacobs and Greg Grumberg. I know. So I much stuff going on. See him. So much stuff going on. All right. Plus, the cars and comedy of it all. We'll talk about that later, too. Uh, we love everybody. Kat, I love you so, so, so stinking much. Same. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> this is the first of many. Are you shitting me? Uh, I love you. We love all of you at home. Please love one another. And uh, that's it. See you later. <laughs> Good night. <Bye. laughs>